Hello. I am going to make sure Kaylee can hop in. And we're going to talk all about shoes. So Kaylee's going to introduce herself, but this is going to be exciting. I also brought like a couple pairs of James shoes. So I'm like, maybe we can ask Kaylee what she thinks. We'll see. Oh, there you are, Kaylee. I'm going to add you. Fun. I cannot wait to learn from Kaylee. Hopefully y'all can hear me well. Hey! hey! My dog was just barking, so it was perfect timing. I was like, oh no, gotta put the dog away. <laughs> well, James, he's downstairs with my mom, so I think they're gonna go outside. I'm like, okay! <laughs> Bye, don't scream, please. No yelling. <laughs> I love it. I am so excited about this, Kaylee. I have been looking forward to this because, you know, I'm a therapist, but I just don't know a lot about shoes. And I don't really know a lot about, like, when do they go barefoot? When do they need shoes? What shoes? I feel like there's just so many options. So I'm really excited for you to chat about this. I've gotten a lot of questions, too. So I think it's going to be very informative for everyone. I hope. So I'm excited and I'll say just as a disclaimer, like I'm still growing and learning and a lot of my opinions and like the way that I view a lot of this has changed just in the last two years. So um, I've been out of the clinic and um, at home with my babies for I think about two years now and um, it's just interesting, you know, we can kind of get in our rut as clinicians of being like, okay, like this is what I do, this is how things go and I'm just going to keep doing that and um, just part of my personal journey is as I distanced myself from being kind of in that environment, I was allowed to be exposed to like some extra information and just have more time to dig into the research um, and kind of just changed flip the script a little bit. So like a disclaimer on all of this though, is that if your child is getting skilled intervention, like trust your therapist, because I cannot speak to all the nuanced situations of kiddos feet. There are different situations where a kiddo really, this wouldn't be appropriate for um, in function and keeping up with their peers is like the number one thing. So I still like there are kids that I look back on and I think, gosh, they probably could have gotten away with a different shoe or maybe even a different plan, but there are still absolutely kids that I was like, no, like they needed lots of bracing. They needed a really supportive shoe because that allowed them to be with their buddies at school or at daycare or their, keep up with their siblings or whatever it may be, achieving those motor milestones that maybe if they had worn a shoe like we're going to talk about today wouldn't have been possible so that's just my little like yes, I love that cat. yes okay so obviously you worked in pediatrics like we both did pediatric therapy okay so you're a physical therapist everyone kaylee okay a little bit of backstory so when i started this account so september will be one year i reached out to kaylee and she was so nice so helpful <laughs> So I just am so thankful, like just looking back that we get to collaborate so much on, you know, well, little, I'm so proud platform. of you because truthfully, like when you sent me that message, like I would get so many of those messages from people like I'm thinking about doing this. And I probably like was a little jaded at that point because I would spend early on, I would spend a lot of time helping people and then they would never start an account. And so I'm like, this is not worth my time. So I hope that I was nice and you were like, so nice. done so amazing. And um, yeah, I'm super proud of your community and all that you've done, but it was really fun to then later be like, oh my gosh, like she actually did it. And Woo! Then, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, you have to take big risks, but hey, it's wonderful. And these people that are here with us, like, they're just so loyal and just really want to know about their babies. And, you know, us as moms, like we want to help people with their babies and our own babies. So that's wonderful. You're a physical therapist. How long did you work in peds? How long have you been in peds? I feel like the years blurred together. I graduated in 2015 and I spent a year in an ortho clinic just getting experience. So like since 2016, I've been wow. in pediatrics. I love what it. What is the math on that? Seven yeah, years? Like, what year is it? I don't even know, right? So, yeah. Okay, great. And y'all know me. I'm Brooke, occupational therapist. Um, I have a baby. His name is James. He's one. And then 
I'm expecting another. I don't know, Kaylee, if you knew that. And yes. you're having another too. Yes. So fun. I'm excited for you. Yes, you too. You have a lot more, you know, experience. So I always just like multiple kids. I'm like, okay, what's going on with that type of life, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's fun. It's a wild ride, but um, but that's so fun. And did I see you know it's a girl? Yes, it's a girl. Okay. So you know, as long as everything goes well and everything hopefully is continuing to go well, it'll it'll be our last probably. So that'll be nice to just um, have to really close in age and then be be good. So we are very thankful. I'm very thankful. So let's talk a little bit about before we get to shoes, okay? Because shoes is the main topic. But just cover a little bit about walking. Of course, you and I both know a lot about walking, but I want to just hear your thoughts as far as like skills required. When is your baby going to be ready to walk? Maybe some age kind of ranges roughly. Just give us your thoughts on walking in general. Yeah. Um, okay. So without going too much into it, and I'm sure that you hammer home on this, like I really want to see a baby crawling before we push walking too much. And I think this can be really hard because I think our culture promotes this idea that by that first birthday, like everyone's asking you, are they walking yet? Are they walking yet? And really anywhere from like 11 to 15 months is a very normal, typical range for a baby to start walking. So they may do it before their first birthday or well after, and that's still considered a normal developmental trajectory. So really focusing on crawling. It's okay if your baby has more time in crawling. I actually think it's phenomenal for neurodevelopment, for, you know, like body mapping and all kinds of things. And we could go on and on about that, but like, don't be discouraged if by their first birthday, they're not walking. It's okay. Um, you know, skills required crawling obviously lends itself to opening up a whole new world of, whoa, now I see all these things that I can pull up on and that's really exciting. So that's another common question or concern I get from parents is like, oh, oh my gosh, my baby finally started hands and knees crawling and now they're pulling to stand. Well, that's okay, that's totally common and there's a lot that happens in between them pulling to stand and them actually being a confident walker. So I think people think like, oh no, they're upright. Like the people that have heard us be on our soapbox about crawling, um, they're thinking, man, they're just gonna skip it and they're gonna go straight to walking. So once they're pulling to stand, you might notice that their knees are really locked out and they're really unstable. So tiny little mini stones along the way are things like them being able to unlock their knees and maybe slightly bend or weight shift to the side, maybe rotating around to reach things, cruising, so walking sideways along surfaces and transferring between surfaces. So where like maybe they're going from the couch to the coffee table and having to do like a full pivot there. Um, they may squat holding onto things and like reach down to get a toy. And then they just start to kind of go from there and expand their confidence. Um, during this time, I recommend families like shove all their furniture as close together as it can be just for a short time. Because once we get that light bulb moment of like, whoa, I just went from like my play kitchen over here all the way over to the lazy boy or whatever. And I was in standing, like I can get around like this. It's kind of a fun moment to see them have that moment of understanding that it's a, a means of mobility. So um, you know, usually they'll start out kind of toddling, taking a few steps and just like face planting, very normal. Arms will be in that high guard because it kind of locks their posture into where they feel a little bit more confident. But watch for those mini stones, you know, watch for those tiny little things because it is really exciting when you know what to look for. Like, oh my gosh, last week their little legs were just like locked out and stiff and they would just plop down on their booty. And maybe this week they're slowly lowering to the floor to get down to sitting. So um, did that yes. answer your question? That is amazing. And I'm just like thinking about James too, because, you know, OT, like I know about gross motor, but like physical therapy, y'all really hone in on like all of those complex, like lower body and just like intricate mini milestones that come. And of course I observe those things, but some of those things you were talking about are really new to me. And so 
I mean, especially too, like I can totally relate with like the bumps and bruises because James fell like when he first started pulling up, I was like, oh my goodness. And of course now, like he's not independently walking, but he's standing a lot more without holding on to things. Like maybe he'll have his little straw cup, kind of distracting him from thinking about the fact that, oh my gosh, like I'm not holding on to anything. Yeah. And so I agree, like I always teach my followers and my clients that, you know, instead of worrying about the big picture, break down the small things because it's a lot more digestible. Like, don't be like, oh my gosh, my, my baby's not rolling or my baby's not crawling or walking. Like, think about, I mean, us as therapists, we think about what skills are needed for this baby to go from the point that they are to the point of achieving the milestone. And I think it just really relieves anxiety among parents, right? Because we all want our babies to be on time and do all the things yeah. appropriately. Yeah, but and it's hard. I think that's where that clinical knowledge comes in that we do have to educate families on because a lot of families would say, I want my baby to walk. So they would either just do push toy or walking with hands. And it's like, there's so much more that goes into it. But as a parent, like we wouldn't know that, right? Like we wouldn't think about break breaking things down and doing like movement analysis is what it's called. And so um, I think it can be really encouraging when we can focus on the little milestones each day that are those little stepping stones towards the really big ones. And they're all so necessary um, to getting there. And you can work on those things in little bite size increments rather than just like going from crawling to walking. And another random thing, since we're talking about shoes, something to note that's really fascinating um, that people may not know is that our bone grows in response to stress. So like weight bearing, your child weight bearing and standing or the muscles pulling on their feet and ankles. I get lots and lots of questions about, oh my gosh, like my baby just started pulling to stand and their feet are so tiny. How am I ever gonna find shoes for them? They're in like a six to 12 month shoe. And the thing that I would encourage you with is that time spent in standing, their feet are gonna grow because their body is suddenly gonna realize, oh, I have this new challenge that I'm having to adapt to, my feet need to grow. Now some babies, they just have little feet and that's okay, but most of the time, you see a huge acceleration in their foot size. And in fact, my first, when she started independently walking confidently, went through three shoe sizes in three months. So like her body was like, whoa, we need to grow our feet so we're not, not falling all the time on these tiny little feet. Um, so that's just something to note too. If you're like concerned about buying shoes and finding the right size, there's lots of great brands that come in like size one and two. Um, but giving it some time too, and it may kind of adjust for itself. Yeah, I see a comment like they didn't know about the growing feet and I didn't either. I mean, cause James literally was in a size two, like he wasn't walking, you know, you just wanted that cute like summer sandal, yeah. you know? And so uh, we got a size two. And then now that he's pulling the stand, cruising, freeing, standing, really like getting ready to walk, we just had to buy threes. So that makes perfect sense. Um, yeah. So, okay, that's great. So let's talk about shoes because we got a lot of questions from like specific people, but I want to just pick your brain, okay? And I did bring two of James' shoes um, yep. if we have time. I'm like, we can analyze them and I'll be like, <laughs> okay, I'm going to return. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but I think that would be fun just to kind of look at two different shoes too. But let's just walk us through as parents, when our babies are ready for shoes, when they're starting to walk, like touch on barefoot versus shoes. You know, let's just talk about all the things. We're listening. Yeah. Okay, so, and someone actually just asked a very similar question. Like, is it okay to put shoes on babies before they're really ready? And, and the short answer is yes, it's absolutely okay. Baby shoes are so cute. Like I am not here to steal anyone's joy or any like grandma's joy that wants to buy all the cute little like crib shoes and stuff. We just want to prioritize barefoot time. So meaning if you're like going to church or like you're going on a fun outing and you wanna put the cute little booties or something on your baby like well before they're walking, totally fine. Um, do it. But then when you're, you're home and you're playing, or maybe you're playing outside in the grass and they don't really need shoes, just think, 
okay, they don't need them right now, or like, I don't have to have them for the outfit, so let's prioritize barefoot time. Almost kind of like, Brooke, how you and I view container time. Like, it, use it, but just really try to emphasize that barefoot time um, on the flip side. So know like, oh, they wore shoes all day today, so tomorrow we're going to try to keep shoes and socks off. Um, when I really recommend a family start thinking about shoes is when baby is getting close to the point, baby or toddler is getting close to the point of what I call community walking. So meaning like, are they going to be outside pushing something around on your driveway and it's 100 degrees outside and they need something to protect their foot? Or are you going to go to the playground and they might be pulling to stand on some mulch that would be really uncomfortable on their foot? So like a a protective kind of idea when we're thinking about a first shoe. And at that point, it can be something really, really simple and minimalist. I don't have them on hand, but what I call it is like a puncture proof moccasin or a puncture proof shoe. So like a lot of companies will have little shoes that look like tennis shoes um, and the bottom is really soft, but it's thick enough that if they stepped on something uncomfortable, it would protect their little foot. But still, they're getting lots and lots of sensation through the bottom of their foot. Their foot is able to adjust and adapt to their environment. So that's kind of when you want to start thinking about it, is, is if it's reasonable or likely that you're going to be in situations where we need to protect their foot, but not be putting a whole lot on there. So that's what we would call like a first walker um, or like a, you know, a, a first walker shoe. Does that make sense? Right. Yes. I love that community walking because like yesterday, my mom and I just took James to the library and my mom put shoes on him. And I'm like, does he need shoes? But, you know, if you think about like he's going to be walking and pulling up on the library bookshelves and the carpet, like we don't know who's like walking yeah. around in there, you know. Yeah. And so that that's great. Um, I think about too, like we're in South Georgia, so it's like super hot, you know, and so mm -hmm. for his birthday, he got like some little like ride on toys. And so mm -hmm. if we're in the, the driveway, like maybe a little shoe to protect his foot from the heat and things like that. So absolutely, very helpful. Okay. As far as like first walker shoes go, kind of talk about, cause I want to talk about the anatomy of the shoe but I want to talk about some brands. So, I mean, do you have any brands like off the off the cuff that yeah. you can think of for like Let me first just walker? Pop over. I think I might have some first walkers right over here. Can you just okay? Cool. And, and then we'll also look at the two I brought because I'm so curious. <laughs> okay, I'm proud of myself. So I'm in my future baby's nursery, and I've like put my office in here now because everyone knows like they really don't sleep in the nursery <laughs> um unless they just do better there for like the first few months so i'm like okay this is gonna be my yeah, office it. now and i've got everything in the little dresser so it's perfect oh, so um the two brands i'm going to show you are 10 little the, the these are both considered a first walker and then oh my gosh look how cute these are these are woolly bubs oh my goodness and they're so easy to slide on. You don't have to worry about like laces or anything. Yes. yes. Okay. So, look, that's um, the brand Lily Bubs. Woolly Bubs, like Woolly Mammoth, Woolly Bubs. I'm gonna link into all these for them too. Yeah, perfect. Um, so these also do have some adjustability at the back here, rather than a Velcro strap. So you do still have some adjustability. Um, but you can see here, they're very, very flexible. The woolly bubs go down, I think this is a size one. Yeah. So I get lots and lots of questions, like I said, on Tiny Feet. This is a great brand. Um, they're a very um, green conscious brand. Some of their shoes actually like are completely biodegradable, um, wow. if not all. So I, if I'm misquoting that, um, I will let you know. But these are great. So very, very flexible. They've got some grip on the bottom just to help with them not slipping and falling, but like it's not enough that the baby it's going to alter the way that their foot is moving. So same with 10 little their first walker is just even more flexible than their regular um, everyday sneakers. Um, again, puncture proof. So like if my kid stepped on a thumbtack, I know that they're it's not going to go through this. Kind of same thing here. There's a few spots that are thinner, but it's still protecting their foot. 
Um, and so I love these. I love, they're just so tiny and cute. They've got a nice wide toe box. So we want our kiddos toes to be able to splay in standing. That's how they grip and get their balance. I need to see adjustability because they all have chunky feet. They've got a fat pad that doesn't disappear till at least two years of age usually. So I like that I could, you know, maybe Velcro this like really wide to make more space. And one of the hacks that I like to do too is if they need even more space, put the tongue on the outside and it gives you just a little bit of extra room. It kind of looks silly, but it, if it's more comfortable for them, then that's what matters, right? And you can kind of pull it up. Um, but that's an important thing. And then having these pull loops for chunky feet are really, really important too. And then both of these you can see have what we call a zero drop sole. So there's no heel that's higher than the toe. It's completely flat. Um, and then when we're looking at the toe here too, we don't really want a whole lot of lift to the toe because that alters the way that their foot moves and um, moves within the shoe and on the ground. So if we have a really nice flat toe here, their foot is able to function how it's intended to. I love that. that literally, you were like doing the flex. Of, this is the kid, okay? I just picked these up because I was like, they didn't really have a lot of options at the store. I was like, okay, this looks like the best option. We haven't worn them yet. But I'm like, okay, I cannot bend this shoe. <laughs> like this thing, it's But very, they're so cute. They're but so it's cute. cute. But we, I want to talk about like this versus this in a minute. Yeah. But talk, I want, I'm very curious to know. So that was great. Like going through like specific brands, which I will link those in stories for people and I'll get some links from you too. And then just like making sure it's got a wide toe box, you know, the, you know, if you need more room, you can pull that tongue out adjustability in the straps you know, pull loops on the back, the heel not higher um, than the toe, and then just making sure um, you don't have a lot of lift on the toe. So those are great, just knowing what to look for. And you can even take these out in lots of shoes too. So that's one of the things I love about Tin Little for multiple reasons. If you can remove the insole, like let's say you're like, oh, I got this size, it's working, but I'm starting to notice that they're getting a little bit tight. You can take out the insole to make more room. Another great hack for therapists is to take out the insole if your kiddos wear orthotics, it makes a little bit more space in there. But the cool thing too is then you can have them stand on the insole from Tin Little and well, on any insole, but it shows you like if their toe gets to this point, it's time, excuse me, to size up. So that's something to note as well. And if you go to my profile, you can maybe share some stuff too, Brooke. Um, but like lots and lots of blog posts on this with direct links to a lot of these brands. I've got a specific blog on shoes for little feet because um, that's such a common question that I get asked. And um, hopefully that will help too to kind of read. I'm a very visual person. So I like to like see like a checklist. And that's the thing I'll say too is like it doesn't have to be these brands. Like there's there's plenty of brands out there that I'm sure are amazing that I just don't know about at all different price points. But if you just look at my checklist, it will tell you like, okay, if you're going into the store, like you were looking for the kids, like if you had that checklist in front of you, you would have been like, know. okay, wide toe box, it's got the pull loop, like this looks good. Oh, it's not flexible. And the reason we really wanna prioritize that flexibility when they're an independent walker or learning to walk and they're practicing it in that shoe is because they need to be able to feel the ground beneath their feet they need that not only to tell their body what to do, how to balance and remain upright, but also so that they can develop those tiny, tiny muscles and ligaments and joints in their foot to have higher level challenges become easier. So if the, if the shoe is really rigid, it basically does all the work for their foot and they're not establishing that muscle control themselves versus if they move to a more minimalist shoe, um, their foot is what what's doing the work. So helpful. Oh my goodness. I actually, I've looked at your blog a few times. Um, I didn't have the checklist, but I'm 100% going to link that. Cause like that was 
you know, a mistake that I made. Honestly, I'm not going to buy my receipt and return these probably. <laughs> but, you, uh, and just see, because I do want something that is more minimalist to build those muscles. Because, you know, I think about muscles, like I'm all about developing all the muscles necessary, right? Yeah. And I might see how he does in these, but maybe if it's not the best option as he starts to walk, I think it's nice to have a couple options, you yeah. know? There was one blog post that I looked at, and I think this is a nice um, kind of segue to an additional topic relating to shoes, but it was on your website, and it was talking about babies that have ankle instability mm -hmm. and, like, what that looks like. You know, you kind of see those ankles kind of turning outward because they're just, and their legs are just kind of coming in at the ankles just a tad. And so that's when a shoe may be best versus barefoot. Yes. So, yeah, give us a, can you give us a little bit more information? I mean, I'm thinking as far as my brain goes, like a shoe maybe with like a high top or something more supportive at the ankles. But I want to know your thoughts on what type of shoes and when do you know that would be best? Yeah, that's a great question. So when we're talking about flat feet, versus true ankle pronation, which is what you're kind of speaking to, it is completely normal for a baby to have flat feet. Where like their arch touches the ground, there's a fat pad there. Like I said early on, like it disappears around two years of age, but that is totally normal if their feet are flat. Now, if we move into what's called ankle over pronation, that's where you see like their heel collapsing in, their feet almost look like turned turned in on the inside and flipped up on the outside. And honestly, if your child has that and they've been standing for quite some time, you need to be working with a therapist to have them walk you through and guide you through a program to strengthen the foot and ankle to determine where it's coming from. Is it hip weakness? Is it core weakness? Is it truly the way that their foot is made? what that looks like, but need to do lots and lots of strengthening to try to counteract that and then determine, is this the way their foot's going to be? Or can we um, improve things quite a bit and get to normal? And so like my daughter, for example, she was one that her poor little ankles were so collapsed in. She was delayed in her motor milestones. And I did put her in a more supportive shoe early on before I knew some of this stuff. And looking back, I, I think, and I wonder, like, what would it have looked like to put her in a really supportive shoe when she was at daycare, but then at home have tons and tons of barefoot time when we go to the park and I could be like chasing her and holding on to her, like maybe using a more minimalist shoe. So, um, you know, it's hard to go too much into it because it is so specific to each kiddo. But what you're speaking to is, is kind of like what I was saying was if, if a more supportive shoe, if we put them in something like like a new balance was like pretty rigid and supportive or like a high top. If that allows them to keep up with their peers, do that. And then also be talking with a PT to focus on like the strengthening and stability component. My daughter's feet are great now. I would say she still like has a flatter foot than some kids. She doesn't have like a high arch but we've done a lot like climbing trees and climbing things at the park and bear crawling and lifting onto tiptoes and balancing and all kinds of things that I knew to do because I'm a PT as her mom, but um, they got better. You know, they were really, really bad and they got better. And now she wears a minimalist shoe and does great and is able to strengthen all of that stuff because like her shoes are not impeding her function. Yes. Does that answer your That's question? So helpful. Love that. And I'll link that blog post too, because I found that very helpful, just trying to determine like what that looks like. I mean, I even like had my child, I was like, okay, I told my husband, I'm like, okay, Dan, let's put him in standing. Like I want to look at him from the back to see what his ankles look like. But I love, it's just crazy to me how like everybody specializes in their own things. Like for me, I'm like a head shaped girl, right? But like, you know, so much about like the foot, the ankle, shoe wise, like just so helpful. Cause I mean, you just go to the store and there's so many options and you just get so overwhelmed. You're yeah. like, I'll just take the first one, you know? Yeah, um, really hard. Then, yes, it's so hard. All the decisions with, with parenthood, it's like one decision after another, right? 
but someone did mention like a specific brand in the comments and i was just going to touch on the fact that you know i'm going to link your checklist i think it's good to have the checklist to guide but you know we're not saying don't buy these types of brands like don't buy this shoe because it's terrible for your baby like yes. we're not extremists yeah. right <laughs> exactly but if we're looking for an option that builds the musculature then like you're saying the minimalist shoe the lightweight flexibility is is a very good option for that gross mother development so yeah. i just wanted to talk about that. that's perfect. all different price points like i said like follow my checklist go into a big box store and try to find one that fits that if you can um you know we really are a family on a budget i think i just talked about this in stories today and so sticker shock sometimes with some of these like more foot healthy shoes has been tough like i'm gonna drop 50 bucks on a pair of shoes for my toddler but what i will say is hindsight as a mama i i now have a six-year-old a four-year-old and this baby on the way and when you look at the value of something over time to me i could have invested more in a higher quality shoe that lasted picking a gender neutral color maybe that I then could hand down to my next kiddo or to this next baby versus buying a bunch of really cheap shoes and then them not lasting. I couldn't sell them on marketplace. I couldn't hand them down to a friend or to my like second or third kiddos. So you ha when you look at it that way, sometimes it does help. And even if you only plan to have one kiddo, like I've been able to hand down some shoes to a little boy that goes to my mom's church who like his mom can't afford shoes and it's felt so good to be like okay we made that investment and now i know i'm giving them a really high quality level of shoe on the flip side of that though the amazing thing about the minimalist shoe movement is that because we want them to be really thin and flexible you can often go to like consignment sales consignment stores like secondhand stores thrift stores and find really good shoes for cheap so don't feel like you have to buy them new either. That was the thing whenever, um, you know, I was focused more on a really sturdy, supportive shoe is we really couldn't shop secondhand because most kids had like blasted through all the support that they had. But when we're looking at a shoe that doesn't do a whole lot for the foot other than just keep it safe from the elements, um, it really opens us up to being able to do a lot more in like the thrifting world. Yes, and I love that especially that one brand is like green conscious. I was in London last week and they're like, I'm telling you there, I guess it was the week before last is so clean. There is barely any trash cans, all recycling. I mean, it just really made me think and it just got me thinking about like scripture and just thinking about, you know, what does the Bible say about that? And, you know, in Genesis one, it says we need to care for like the earth that God has provided for us. And so we yes. started recycling and things. So that is really cool too, that not only can it be passed down, you can buy them for a discounted price, but also we know they're not made with these materials that are not going to last. And then also gonna, um, you know, just be in a landfill, right? Yes, absolutely. So, uh, that's great. Wonderful. Okay. I think the last thing I want to touch on, and then we can answer, you know, maybe a couple questions, but we really have covered a lot, um, is sizing. So we're very, I'm very thankful. And maybe most shoe stores do this, like children's shoe stores, not too sure. But one place we have in our community, which we live in a pretty small town, but they size the shoe for you. They like, they put your baby's foot on the little thing, they size it. They're like, okay, he needs a three or whatever. So if they don't have that option and if they don't have the 10 little wear or shoe that shows you, which that is amazing that they do that because that's really cool. How would you measure your, your baby's foot? Like how would Great you do question. that? Before we go into that, I want to say too, because I had a, a mom brain moment where I was like, there's something I was going to say and I forgot. Try to not get like super into brands either because I've even found some brands that I was like, oh, this shoe from them is amazing. It checks all the boxes. 
then I went and looked at like a different season of shoe or a different size of shoe and maybe I thought it was terrible. So really going back to that checklist, like just look for these things as much as you can, read the reviews, um, cause it can be hard to see online. Like, is it flexible? Like, what does the sole look like? Um, but all that to say, like, there's, there are very few brands that I'd be like, yes, 100% of all their shoes are amazing. Vivo would be one that like they are, that is their thing is minimalist foot healthy shoes. Um, Tin Little is pretty good. Their sandals, their original sandals, I didn't used to like. Now I like them. Anyways, so, okay, talking about sizing, that can get tricky because if you go to a shoe store and you're like, oh, we're standing on this standardized measurement thing and it's saying it's a size three. So annoying and obnoxious, but every shoe company's sizing chart is so different. So let's say you're like, oh, I'm at like Bob's shoe store and they told me my kid needs a size three. So you go, you're like, I'm gonna get Mary Jane's in a size three and I'm gonna get like this cute little tennis shoe in a size three and this winter boot in a size three. They could all fit completely different. So very frustrating, <laughs> right? Um, any shoes, just like as a, an aside, any shoes, if their insoles come out, in the store, pop these out and have your toddler stand on them. That's like a quick, like the quickest way that you can see where their foot's going to land. If their foot's, if the shoe's going to be wide enough for their feet, if it's long enough, what, what their foot is going to be on. And they need to be in standing. So you can't like have them in your lap and hold it up to their foot because when we stand, our foot expands. So they need to be in standing, even if that's supported standing, that's totally fine. Um, but a couple different ways that you can do it. I like to have a piece of paper. I sit them on my lap. I'm like sitting on the ground and I stand them up and I just like try to draw really quickly a little outline around their foot. And usually I try to do this like two to three times <laughs> to get my best, like most accurate measurement. I love it. I usually take like the average of those three because you know, they're wiggling, like maybe turn on a show or something so that they're standing more still. But um, I usually take the average of those three measurements. So that sounds really complicated, but like adding all three up, dividing by three. And then I'm like, okay, my child's foot is seven inches and so many, you know, seven and a quarter inches or this many centimeters. Most sizing charts will go off inches and centimeters. Centimeters is of course like a smaller measurement. So I think you can be more precise with that. Um, when we're talking about looking at sizing charts, we don't want to size up um, if it's not super close. So that's kind of hard to explain, but basically if you're going to have to add a significant amount of inches or centimeters to get to the next size, I would prefer you go down. Okay. As long as it's not less. Um, so we don't want to be going smaller than their current size of foot. This is really hard to, <laughs> to yeah, I'm following. That makes sense. But when you yep. see the size chart, you'll know what I'm talking about. But like, we really don't want to size up, especially when they're early walkers. Now, if they're in like elementary school and you want to go up a half a size to try to make them last the whole school year, like more power to you, that's probably fine. But do not size up, especially like trying to accommodate for width or a chunkier foot. It will cause them to trip and fall over their toes. It's like someone wearing a clown shoe because their feet are so tiny. It's so much more compounded, the effects of that. So a couple of things you can do when you have that little outline is you can look online. If you've got like the inches or centimeters on each brand and what size they need, you can also literally take that to the store and like, maybe you're like, okay, honey, like I'm going to go shoe shopping for the baby and you're, you're on dad duty. Like I'm going by myself and not taking them. So I can't look at their foot. Then you've got that little piece of paper and you can either like set the shoe on top of the paper, or you can pull the insole out and put it on top of their little foot outline. But that can be so fascinating and interesting too, because I think a lot of people love like going to target for shoes. And when you pull out targets insoles, you see just how narrow a lot of their shoes are, which can make it tough. Some kids are fine with those narrow shoes, but um, I'm trying to make sure I cover it on my bases. But like there's multiple ways. We just want to make sure we know that every size chart is so different. So you want to look at that specific brand's 
size chart that you're either ordering from or buying from in the store. Love that. I'm like thinking about my own thing. Yeah. I'm like, I have like a little bit of a wider foot and I always size up. So I'm like, okay, I need to like draw an L out of my foot and then do the same because yeah. I do have like feet issues sometimes. And maybe it's because I'm trying to stuff them into narrow shoes. Yes. You know? Yeah. And um, so Kelly at the Barefoot Shoe Guide, she shares a ton of stuff for moms and for adult shoes. And I, um, Vivo just sent me some shoes to try too. And you know, in pregnancy, like I thankfully have not had a ton of swelling, but I just didn't like the feeling of my feet being cramped in shoes and hot. And their toe box in their shoe is so nice and wide. When I get home from a walk, I'm like, my toes don't like feel uncomfortable. This is so <laughs> nice. I love that. Oh my goodness. I love it. Okay. This is really been great. I just want to make sure, you know, um, there's a couple questions about like specifics. So like we talked about brands, we talked about sizing, we talked about should you put your baby in shoes prior to walking. We talked about, you know, how do you know um, what shoes to buy? There's a few questions and we'll just kind of wrap it up here um, with these questions is, you know, what are some brands for babies that have a high instep? Do you have any off the kind of, and let me just give you the list. So there's brands for toe walkers, brands for in, high instep, and then brands for a baby that has like high tops. Okay. Um, do you have any like specifics? And I'll write them down and I can put them in, a, in the comments too. Yeah. Well, I'm going to give you a disappointing answer. You don't <laughs> have any. High instep into walkers. Just in general, I stay away from saying like, oh, this shoe would be great for this very specific thing. Um, because it's so nuanced. That means a clinical eye on it because you may put a, a toe walker in a high top shoe and it does nothing. I had plenty of toe walkers that I put in high top shoes that I thought were like, or like boots that I thought were gonna bring them down, but there's such a deeper underlying cause that the shoe itself is probably not gonna do a ton. Or like the squeaker shoes, like a lot of people use the squeaker shoes to try to get the heel down maybe the kid is not motivated by the squeakers. So in high in step two, like that's pretty uncommon, I would say, to have a higher arch. Ultimately, you probably, unless they had pain, could do a shoe like what I'm recommending and their foot is just gonna move the way that it needs to. I wouldn't say that we need to build up the arch to that in step, but again, so nuanced, so clinical and something that like in the Instagram space, in my opinion, is not appropriate because that is such a unique situation. So I'm sorry. To not that. <laughs> no, that's a great answer. I know. And talking about toe walking. So my friend, her baby's like toe walking. And I'm like, okay, I'm thinking about it as an OT from like a sensory perspective, like proprioception, like he's trying to get a ton of body weight through his little feet. Like he really likes the way that heaviness feels, yes. right? Yeah. So we're not going to alter the shoe as much as we're going to implement a sensory diet, right? Yeah, so exactly. just from an OT, I totally agree with that. And I, I'm with you on those things. Like people are like, my baby's not crawling. This is what they're doing. I'm like, okay, we, we got to like break it down. It's not one size fits all. Yeah. Like if you've tried the free tips or the tips on my page and it hasn't worked, then we might need to dig a little deeper, you know? Yeah. There are so, some really cool insoles and the name of the brand is escaping me right now um but if someone googles like sensory insoles for toe walkers i've not actually gotten to try them in the clinic but the idea of them i think is really fascinating um and they've got like little things on them that basically give sensory feedback when the foot is flat so just a random aside about that um i also want to say before we get to the last question that I'm super excited that we just got official approval for APTA continuing education units Yay! for the summer that we're doing together. So um, for anyone who's still listening, thank you for being here. Um, <laughs> Brooke is a speaker at the Thriving in the First Year Summit, which is a summit that I put on with 
one of my other OT friends. And um, if you're a parent or a pediatric professional, uh, this is such a phenomenal resource and like my topic is on shoes. So if you want to know even more, I dive a little bit more into the research in my topic and Brooke dives a ton into like her methodologies and stuff behind head shape. So if you've ever just wanted to like hear her, you know, start to finish talk about that topic. But if you are a therapist and you're watching this, we just got CEU approval, which is huge. Um, and it's 15 credit hours. So I just had to plug that. So okay. exciting. Um, we don't have like everything up and running yet, but we can maybe add the link to this um, within the next couple of days so people can sign up if they're interested. In yes, that. I am. So my friend was texting me. She was like, okay, what CEUs are you taking? I'm like, okay, well, I'm pretty sure this is going to get approved, but that yes. is amazing. Like, and it's going to be so many like professionals and moms that yes. just get it and are also like, you know, pretty smart and educated. So I'm yeah. so excited um, to hear from everybody else too. So I think really the last question is just like high tops, but you know, just like some specific brands for high tops. But I feel like, you know, like you've said, if a baby needs a high top, it might be, you know, needing a little bit further look at like the ankle instability. Like why do they need that support kind of thing? Um, so would you agree with that? And yeah, yeah. And some people just like the look of a high top too. And I think that's fine. We just need to be going back to the like that it needs to be really flexible. So it as long as you're not using it to gain stability under the guidance of a therapist, and you're just like, Oh my gosh, these little high top boots are so cute. Or, you know, these high top tennis shoes. I want that area to just be fabric. I don't want it to be rigid because I want their little ankle to be able to shift and move side to side, back and forth, whichever way. So think about that. And there, there's lots of great brands out there that are just fabric there. It's just for like the look of it. And that's totally fine. I don't have any specific brands in mind. Like I know Merrill makes a high top, um, like Billy's are a popular one. I think Billy's have a pretty rigid sole though. Um, but a lot of people use those for orthotics. Um, I'm trying to think 10 little has a high top that I know of, but yeah, I think as long as it's not impeding their ability to move their foot and ankle, then it's totally fine. I love it. I love it. I was shaking my head. Someone thinks I'm listening to music. I'm also just very intently listening to you. Yeah. Um, okay, that's great. Honestly, these two shoes are not the best, but you know what? We all learn all the time, and that's just part of being a person is being a lifetime learner. So this was really helpful for me just as a mom and as a, as a parent that has a, a baby that's about to walk. And so I am going to link. I took a ton of notes. So I'm going to link some of this in the comments of the live, but also I'm going to hop on stories and put some things like that you mentioned, specific brands and things, link your, blo your blog post. But this You're was awesome. so helpful. So I helpful. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and I think I've got several shoes posts pinned to like the top of my profile because it really is one of the most common questions. I get asked about and most of those have some automation set up to where like if someone comments a certain word on it that it will send them direct to those blog posts too so thank you for sharing that that helps me a ton because it's hard to get through everything in one of these lives and um when you go to my blog a pop-up will come up that gives you that checklist it's like my top tips for shoe buying um, and it's a pdf and it links out to lots of different blog posts but that can be something easily like if you're going to the shoe store and you just want to refresh your memory beforehand on what to look for it can be a really good resource well that is perfect well i look forward to hearing more about it in the summit and thank you so much you're yeah, so smart you. i love this this was very helpful so, oh, so everybody has a great day bye guys bye